Today we're going to talk about humidity throughout the incubation process and why it even matters. All eggs are laid with something called the bloom intact and that's usually the thing unlike Moran's eggs that makes them appear to be sort of purple or on olive eggs that makes them appear to be sort of gray and if you get some moisture on the outside of the shell and you run it down the outside of the shell you'll notice the bloom because it'll almost be a sort of matte color in comparison to the color of the egg. The bloom is on the egg to protect what's inside from bacteria from outside entering in because that shell is actually porous. Oxygen can flow through the shell to the developing embryo inside and also moisture can leave the shell throughout stages of development. And that is where humidity comes in. Each egg should lose about 13 to 14 percent of its weight through water evaporating throughout the incubation process. And the humidity in the incubator has everything to do with this. Excessive humidity, too high of humidity, will cause moisture to leave too slowly, will cause chicks to grow too large, and most importantly, will cause air sacs to develop too small. So that during those last three days of incubation, when our chicks internally pip, which means when they poke through the membrane inside the shell into that air sac, and their respiratory systems start to work and they start breathing the air inside that air sac, they may not have enough air inside that air sac while they're going through that process to externally pip and unzip in that shell. This might cause them to suffocate and die right before hatch. Or even worse, drowning occurs when humidity is too high throughout the incubation process, moisture is not enabled to leave at a proper rate, and there is moisture left inside of that egg around that air sac when the chick internally pips, and when they start to breathe, they accidentally inhale the excess moisture that's left inside the egg. Adversely, if humidity is too low throughout the incubation process, we might see smaller chicks and larger air sacs, which is typically Typically less of a problem than too high of humidity, but smaller chicks sometimes means weaker chicks. So when humidity is too low throughout the incubation process, moisture can leave the egg too quickly and that air sac has more room to grow. It is generally accepted that a rate of like 40 to 50 percent humidity seems adequate throughout the incubation process. And we also all seem to agree that at lockdown, humidity needs to be bumped up by about 25 percent to maybe like 65 to 75 percent so that we can help maintain moisture in the incubator for the membranes to stay moist as the chicks are pipping and unzipping. I have a video about that that I put out like last week. Go check that out. And listen, when hens are broody sitting on eggs in the wild or like our domesticated chickens or whatever. They get off those eggs once a day. They get off those eggs periodically to eat, to poop, to drink. And so it's okay for humidity to fluctuate and not stay exactly the same within the incubator. What we're looking for is the average humidity throughout the incubation process overall. And what we're looking for is the size of that air sac. And what we're looking for is the percentage of moisture or the weight that's lost from that egg throughout the incubation process. So it's okay to open the incubator a couple times throughout the incubation process and candle. It's okay if something happens and all of a sudden your humidity gets all wonky. Just get it back right. There are several ways that you can measure humidity. One is using a hydrometer. Usually most of our incubators will tell us digitally what the humidity and temperature is inside. I'm also going to provide you with these two little cheat sheets of how to measure the size of your air sac, which is also indicative of how stable our humidity has been throughout the incubation process and also by weight. Anyways, as always, happy hatching.